Hello, and welcome to another episode of As the Cosmos Turns. As we can see here, this is part of the hazards of being and becoming again the spiritual being that you are. But what of our heroine? Where is she? Where can she be? She is in the dark passage. Now, some people may say this feels like a tunnel. There she is. But what has she been through? Well, she's been through this hurdle and that hurdle. And now she has entered a place which is her passageway. You can think of it as a dark passage. This is not the same as a dark night of a soul. It's depressing. It's flat. It's a bit squeezed. And it's wobbly. She feels up. She feels down. She feels like she's sliding this way and she's sliding that way. And as she comes down to earth, there is a water hazard. She's now swimming in the deep emotions of the heart. And they are deep. But we are deep. We are deep and we are capable. And what do we tell her? We say, you can do this, you can do this. Find your soft landing. But when she gets to that soft landing, what does she do? Well, she gets herself situated. She's a new her. She has been through this obstacle and this obstacle and this obstacle. But what is happening now? Her counterpart, her other half, Guess what he's got? He's going through the marathon. Here he is sitting there feeling sorry for himself because something, some karmic two by four has hit him upside the head. And she's over here saying, you can do this. You can do this. Don't reach for comfort with other women. I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello out there? And he vaguely hears something. But more than that, because of what she's done and the work with me, she's able to get through. Hello, I'm here. Don't lose faith. Be hopeful. You too can do this. I am your cheering section. I love you. I am the one who is always rooting for you, even when you're down. But don't reach for others. They can help you the way I can. And what is she able to do? She is able to reach him where he is and help to lift these burdens. Because whether or not he knows it, he is becoming the honorary divine feminine. Yes, he is finding not only his masculine as she has had to find her and his masculine because feminine Feminine and masculine is in her. She's had to find that masculine so she can speak up, push off, get through. And now he has to find his inner divine feminine and get himself through this marathon. It's an obstacle course. He's not sure he can reach every hurdle. He's not even sure if he wants to do this. However, we all are doing this. This is not a normal year. This is the year where ascension is the new normal. Ascending upward through your own connection so you can get to that next level. Get to your soft landing spot, which really is up here. It's not down here at this level. And being new, being cohesive, melting together, skin to skin. They want to be skin to skin. Again, like they have been in so many lives past. But what is he upset about? He upset because he has no power at every level. There's times that he has to surrender he doesn't even know how to do that because to him surrender means giving up surrender means rolling over and playing dead 
Look at him. He's not finished with the marathon. Far from it. But as we go through and things fall away from his head, she's been able through the light body work that I teach to heart communicate. They don't have the benefit in this separation to really do much more than cheer each other on, encourage each other, don't call each other names. Does she think he's a narcissist because karmic stuff fell on his head again? That's not her. That's not how she is. She is an eternal optimist that always says, you can do this. I can do this. You can do this. You're not crazy. He thinks he's crazy sometimes. And she can genuinely say, sometimes I thought I was crazy. Sometimes I was wondering why I was getting dressed every day. Sometimes I had suicidal feelings. Sometimes she didn't understand the process of ascending and purging. Now, what else happens with this? What else when he becomes the honorary divine feminine? as he reaches for his own divine masculine. Because you see, toxic masculinity is never divine. It doesn't magically transform unless people focus on their transformation. True transformation starts from inside you. That's where your seeds are. True things are something that you desire. So I have several classes coming up here to help everybody with this, not just men, although a lot of men are going through this. They feel sorry. They might feel sorry that things have happened to them. They may feel sorry that things went the way that they did. They may want to rewrite history. If only, I wish that I could only, if only I had. But we're beyond regrets now. Now it's time for the actions that not only correct things, bring in personal solutions for people. Because from those personal solutions of getting healthy, if she's not getting through her own stuff and, not, and stop to reach for other men or, you know, if she's gay, if she's lesbian, she might not want to reach for a new girlfriend. She has to do self-reliance from within. Getting healing at a higher level with me helps. It helps speed up the process. It helps smooth it out. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of all of the purging because that's something people don't understand. If you're healing the past, you're going to purge. If you're letting go of an addiction, you're going to purge. If you're letting go of toxic stuff, you're going to purge. And it's stuff that makes you puke. Because if you were to see it all over again, you'd probably want to KYS. That stands for kill yourself. That's why the suicidal feelings come up. You don't have to live that again. You actually get to set down the burdens. Because they're heavy. <clears throat> they're heavy. They weigh heavily on the head. So what are the things that have, you know, hit him upside the head with this cosmic two by four, the karmic two by four? It's all of the things from history that he's had no control over, that he hasn't been able to change, that he too has stuffed down into his stomach, that the things he's stuffed in his stomach give her some irritable bowel. The tension that he holds around his heart makes her feel like he's heart blocked. The things that she is anxious about, he feels is just a general scatter and they can't tune into each other. How do people tune in? You have to work with your twin within because so many people are in separation that is a part of the process for you to become adept 
at heart communication, at not relying on devices, not relying on the internet, of being able to feel each other, really feel each other. This is a time of new beginning, and especially around this time of year, this is traditional for a lot of cultures to have a New Year's, some kind of New Year's celebration, some kind of purging or atonement or confession or giving up. Some people may not believe in that. You don't have to do it publicly or with someone. But if you carry that stuff, it's a burden. It can be felt as a burden on both of your bodies. Your light body is new. You have a template which supports you from the fifth dimension. So if you're not giving up the old patterns and template, I don't care how much of a push you feel like you get out of the, whatever people call it, the matrix, the grid points, the old 3D earth, the old paradigm, it all amounts to the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're not getting rid of soulmates. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are if things are not kind and things are not conducive to both of you healing. If you're still calling names and still trying to categorize each other, that's not going to help you. Not even any of that research. Ultimately, it completely has no bearing on your twin flame union. Your soul doesn't want to know what the terms here are on earth. Only certain parts of the society here need to know that so that help can be provided. So for example, if someone has bipolar and they need medication, whatever that medication is, yes, that can be categorized. But when it comes to love, you soothe each other, you help each other. You're holding each other within. Don't you want to be in love? Don't you want to be here and put skin to skin? You know you're feeling it. You know you've been feeling it since the time of a child. A lot of you that I have asked and the sessions have been great, you say to me, you know what? I always had this sense or my favorite game when I was a kid was to play house. I always somehow knew there was somebody, or I had these dreams even as a young kid. That's been my experience. A lot of this process and the journey, the journey that's been shown to me has been through my dream time. What about all your ascension symptoms? As much as we like to think that two lovers are equal, they each have their own biology, which is from their ancestry. He has his, she has hers, or she and she have theirs, respectively. He and he, if there's two gay guys together, two men that are in love with each other, two women that are in love with each other, it is the same. You have the origins of your biology, your biological family, even if you were adopted. And that's when it gets weird because things can show up and they can show up as a symptom. You have to address that. It's time to start integration. Now, some people know that, but they don't know how. I'm here to tell you, I have those ways. I have those ways to make it easy to do it with several sessions so that you keep leveling up. Because while you like to think that it is something that it is definitely something you're here for. It's something you were even invited for. You were both invited here with the understanding that you do come together at some point. I get people say, oh, you know, Patricia, it didn't happen. You have the connections inside you. Do you think that God is so foolish he didn't put the connection in your heart? I mean, you're giving far too much credit to the human side of things, which is incapable of getting everything done. And you're beyond human. You can't have it both ways where you say, well, I'm only human, but then you say, I'm a human angelic. You're a human angelic. Everyone here has angelic DNA of one way, shape, or form or another. And some of you feel it. You have angelic traits, believe it or not. 
The spirit that drives you is an angelic part. It's frequently thought of as the human spirit. It is your angel side. That is your angelic side. You need to be able to clear unwanted connections. So she is not just his cheering section over here. She is over here having gotten through the obstacle course, the water hazard, been in, you know, the really deep dive of the heart, the depression, you know, angers, angers are coming up, Ugh. weeping. What is the weeping for? Well, the weeping is for lost civilizations, places and timelines that you've had a connection to, but you don't need all the bad stuff from that connection. It's connected to a part of your body. Some people can't even cry. It's been that deep. Some people leak tears and find that the sorrow just comes upon them at times when it's not convenient, it's not helpful, it's confusing, and sometimes it's alarming. But do not be alarmed. I have the answers and I have my modality, which is brand new, to help you. It is the twin flame body modality to help coach you. And this is not readings. This is not a tarot reading. Don't even ask me to do a tarot reading. I can do it. I'm not going to do it. It's time to address the body. It's time for me to be the Blu-ray that I am because I have already mastered and gone through all my cycle. And I'm here to empower you. So if you want to mess around with stuff that, you know, it's just going to keep looping for you or holding you in a certain, you know, frozen in time state. Or are you ready to move through this with grace and ease more efficiently? There's things coming up. Some of you are already feeling it. So I have several classes planned. The Twin Within and New Beginnings. And the next class is also called changes to a woman's body in ascension because that too is throwing people off it's confusing and i'll be talking about that more but if you if you need the class and it's for all ages there's things that happen when you're older and you've already had children there's things that are pertinent for when you're younger you're on the dating scene how do you navigate that and I've also written a book called Twin Flame Relationships. Now, what this book is for is this is for the couple to navigate their other relationships. Plus, I have a great chapter in here on how to stop being an empath where it hurts you. Now, being an empath can really feel like a superpower at times. You can feel your superpowers being an empath. But what about when it hurts? Do you know how many lifetimes you've been an empath? That doesn't feel very powerful sometimes because sometimes it's like having everyone standing on your nerves. So what's it gonna be? Are you here to level up? Are you here for the life and love that you're really here for? Okay, this isn't just sayings. This isn't just like, I'm the light and the love. This is actually embodying love from an entirely different dimension. And it's not just about a blessed state. It is about unification, unification of your brand new parts. That means clicking it into the parts of you where it counts. It's about, so this season is about getting all of your essential stuff ready. Join me in the classes. The Twin Within, The Lover Within, New Beginnings, and coming up, the one that I'm calling Changes to a Woman's Body in Ascension. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. I have my first two practitioners, Nimra, she is in Phoenix, and in Calgary is Walla. They're both great. I highly recommend that they help you with coaching. They can also help you with session. 
and I am here in Chicago. My name is Patricia. I'm in Chicago. I do live in-person classes. We're limited to 15 people because of COVID, but I will be having classes that are live and I do live energetic body work, twin flame body work because only a twin flame body practitioner knows how to perceive and enable both of your energies. So like it or not, even when she gets through things, she can still feel things because it's with her. He is with her even when he's not with her. That's a paradox, okay? He's over here feeling pretty upset with the world because there's been things that have happened. But she has magical powers to come and help lift things just as he has done for her. Do for each other what you have not been able to do. That is one of the things I encourage people. Do for the person you love what you think that they cannot do for themselves. When I work with people, I'm usually working with one person because of the separation, but it helps both of you. So thanks so much for watching and joining another episode of As the Cosmos Turns. Bye now.